وصلوا وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحباب it's important for us as Muslims to be balanced be balanced in our worship of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and follow the Sunnah of the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام and not try to have uh, to be to go beyond those boundaries that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has set for us and that the Sunnah exhibits for us the Sunnah of the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام and ayu al ahbab, as Muslims often, especially when we begin to newly practice, meaning those people who were maybe born Muslim, but they begin to go through a phase where they become strong in their religion and become uh, have some zeal. Or the other example is the new Muslim who has zeal for the religion. They want to practice, they read, whatever they understand, they try to implement in accordance with their understanding. And this Ayul Ahbab, in one, has two aspects to it. One aspect is the zeal is good. To have zeal to practice and to worship Allah and to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other aspect is the lack of knowledge or the ignorance that we may have or may possess and the need for knowledge. So zeal without knowledge can be a very dangerous thing. It can lead to bid'ah. It can lead to extremism. It could lead to the issues of tikfir and, and declaring other Muslims to be apostates or innovators without the right to do so and without the knowledge of the rulings on how to practice this. Let's look at this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which shows us the importance of being balanced and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and being consistent in our deeds. And another benefit is that it shows us the rights of our families over us, that even when seeking knowledge or fasting or other acts of ibadah, that we should not go to one uh, extreme or the other, but we should have the balance, and the balance is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yahya reported, I and Abdullah ibn Yazid set out till we came to Abu Salama. We sent a messenger to him in his house in order to inform him about our arrival, and he came to us. There was a mosque near the door of his house, and we were in the mosque. Till he came out to us, he said, If you like, you may enter the house, and if you may like, if you like, you may sit here in the mosque. We said, We would rather sit here and you relate to us. He, Yahya, then narrated that Abdullah bin Umar ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, him, said to him, I used to observe fast uninterruptedly and recited the whole of the Quran every night. It, the in, un, 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 uninterrupted fasting and recital of the Quran every night, was mentioned to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or he sent for me. And I went to him, and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, I have been informed that you fast continuously and recite the whole of the Quran every night. I said, Messenger of Allah, it is right, but I covet thereby nothing but good. Whereupon he said, it suffices you that you should observe fast for three days during every month. I said, Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am com- capable of doing more than this. He said, your wife has a right upon you. Your visitor has a right upon you. Your body has a right upon you. So observe the fast of Dawood or David, the apostle of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for he was the best worshiper of Allah. I said, O Messenger of Allah, what is the fast of David? He said he used to fast one day and take a, a break the next day. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, recite the Quran during every month. I said, O Messenger of Allah, I'm capable of doing more than this, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whereupon he said, recite it in 20 days. Recite it in 10 days. I said, I'm capable of doing more than this. Then he said, recite it every week and do not exceed beyond this. For your wife has a right upon you, your visitor has a right upon you, your body has a right upon you. He, Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I was hard to myself and thus I was put to hardship. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told me, you do not know you may live, whether you may live long, thus, uh, and bear the hardships for a long time. 
I accepted that which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told me. When I grew old, I wish I had availed myself of the concession granted by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was narrated in Sahih Muslim. Ayyul Ahbab, another benefit that we gain from this hadith is that, of course, being balanced in our worship. And balanced, Ayyul Ahbab, does not mean whatever we think is balanced, meaning that you don't pray witr, you don't pray any of your sunans, you think it's balanced just to pray the obligatory. That's not balance, ayyul ahbab. Balance is not mean laziness. Balance means sufficing yourself to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, doing the obligatory duties, and doing what you can of the extra fast, and the extra salat, and the extra uh, forms of charity and so forth. That not to have, be too extreme and have the zeal to do something that you were, you're unable to do more than a night or two. For example, the person who makes tahajid and they make that an obligation upon themselves or they, they strive to do that, but then they leave it after one month, one month of good worship. Then after that, they leave it for 10 years. So this is a very dangerous thing and a very serious thing that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has warned us against. So may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us with al nafia wa ruskin tayyibah, wa amal al and bless us to put our zeal in the right place. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.